Welcome to the tea slurping, trail gallivanting, rustic loving, pop knob stealing, you know who you are podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Whatever you're doing. Can we feature a little thing here, Gary, on things you're doing whilst listening to the podcast? Or is that opening a can of worms of... <laughs> <laughs> that could be a little Tales from the Trail segment. Trails, what were you doing while you're listening to the podcast? We are so grateful to have you here next to us and hope you enjoy the show. Thanks to all our patrons and partners too. We have Precision Fuel and Hydration, Om, Tiki Boo, Mountain Fuel, Outdoor Active, Vila Forte, Silver, Active Root, The Centurion Running Store, Protein Rebels, Sportsshoes.com, Big Bubble Hats, X Miles, Fawnside, Barn Cottages, and You Go Koo Projects too. Big shout out. Oh, Gary's got his hat on. Big shout out to Hugo Koo for reaching out. And patrons get a whopping 20% off at yougokooprojects.com. We've got some awesome hat. I got one too. Uh, I did just put it on show, Gary, because I've just been running in it. I've got the more lightweight version on than you, Gary. Amazing for running, especially in the mountains at this time of year, because the sun is quite low. So as it comes, you go out in like the dark and the frost. And as it comes over the mountains, it literally like blinds you because it's really low. But then you have to keep taking your sunglasses off and on and off and on little hat like that perfection though now i've got like rugby it. In it, it's sweaty and minging so I'm gonna need <laughs> but even this one's super light and it's got like that kind of perforated top so keep my i love a super cool. light one i do i do love a cap but i've been looking for like that super light but also it's got a nice bit of toweling at the front so you don't get the rubbage on the forehead anyway <laughs> uh, We've digressed. If you'd like some awesome discounts and to support our partners and the show, then please consider joining Patreon. Whenever I like have a friend who perhaps isn't a running friend and then they say, oh, I'm a Patreon, it really touches my heart. I almost feel a bit guilty. I'm like, you know, you don't need to, you don't need to be a Patreon. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you love it. Gary's like, <laughs> which, which tier are you then? Which tier are you? What's that one, eh? All right. Oh, man, it is such a treat though when I bump into a, a listener and then when they say they are a Patreon too, we're just like, yeah, they, they got our backs. They got our backs or they just love my misery. Maybe even treat yourself over at Summit Crazy if you'd like to. Some awesome tea and trails merch. I'm so sorry. That was the worst introduction ever. I've got that. I'm so excited to talk to you, Gary. I can't focus. <laughs> oh, wow. You're not the one that's uh, concise and keeps it all together. I'm the one that stumbles over the sentences. <laughs> well, welcome to episode 40. We catch up with two roaring dragons. Trish and Robin join us for more Dragons Back Fun. The coaches share the knowledge. Yugoku Project supports this week's competition. Eddie and I share our weekly deets. And we pop over to Tales from the Trails to see what you've all been up to. Go on, say Tales from the Trails again. Tales from the Trails. <laughs> Tales from the Trails. I missed it last week when you, you said Tales from the Trails in a Northern accent. <laughs> and it was only during the edit I thought, oh, a little Northern accent slipped in there. <laughs> I often speak in a little bit and I think you didn't hear what I said. And then I think you'll hear that in the edit when I've I either said something inappropriate or I've said something a bit mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should we do our sponsors shout out? Yeah, shout out to our sponsor. All the patrons get 15% off full price items. Over at theom.com, I've been using my the little waist belt, the Om waist belt three loads recently. Great for my morning runs with Rex. I get my poo bags, my trail snacks, my phone, my keys, my asthma pump, all fit in. No problem. And also re Om is trying to ensure no Om products ever enter landfill. Does it bounce up and down your fanny pack as you're running, or is it? <laughs> I was going to see a fanny pack, but I left it out. <laughs> or whenever there's a t- any any point, you can say fanny pack in life. Just pop it in there because I think it's the best two words together. I have images of you like bouncing along with what do you need, Rhett? No, it's fine actually. I was worried about that uh, if it would bounce. I didn't use it on Dragon's Back Race because I used my little elasticated poorly belt thing but no it's fine but it's me i've used it loads recently so big thumbs up precision fuel and hydration is our other podcast sponsor everyone can get a free fuel and hydration plan you've talked a bit about doing yours i did mine as well actually before the spine i had a chat ran through it and they wanted to follow me on the spine because they do these athlete cases studies of what you what you feel and then it's helpful for yeah. people and it's helpful for their research so we we set that all up i had all my fuel ready and of course <laughs> and it says this is fine within five hours i was vomiting yeah. 
So I had to, to go with my tail between my legs and go, I'm really sorry, but I have nothing to give you because it all went to it. But uh, it must happen all the time, mustn't it? That they go, that I go, look, I think I probably had one gel. And then I did use a lot of their electrolyte tabs, but um, I just, I just stayed clear of gels for the rest of that wonderful adventure. Patrons get 15% off and anyone can get 15% off their first order with the code caps lock T and trails 15 or one word. I was adding some precision hydration electrolyte sachets that you actually gave me the tip because I always get that I always buy the tabs and we all live on them because my oldest child uses them too when he has like five hours six hours training a day he uses the weakest electrolyte and then you said they'd recommended getting the sachets because they don't fizz this is a good idea so I was looking at getting some of those then I saw this 300 flow gel which is 300 grams of carbs in a pack it did make my stomach slightly go oh my god (laughs) you add it to they've got special little soft glass you got and you add it into there and you don't need to add water and then i guess you just sip it like you would just sip it yeah it's pretty cool actually their soft flask if my memory is correct because i on one on it's not a soft flask it's, i think it's a hard bottle they've got but yes on my so one of my soft flasks i would i mark a pen some gauges on it but their lovely little bottle does it all for you so it's you better know... for the environment because you haven't got all the packaging of all that yeah. Uh, yeah. gel and then you can just you've just got it you don't need to worry about gel packets and stuff yeah i'm not sure for my next race that i will be using much gels but i definitely will be using a lot of electrolyte but that's another it's so hard to know isn't it because if you're running long like you said about the spine wrist you have these plans so you might not fancy think i'm going to go in with it with gels but i know say lakeland 100 gels were the only thing i could really consume life yeah. is tricky gary life is <laughs> got to solve those problems thanks to all our patreon partners and sponsors for supporting tea and trails podcast you can find links to all our sponsors at www.tandtrails.com or in the show notes how you doing i saw a little bit of little bit of jogging it takes a long time i try to do a bit yes i have been running again i think i've been running every day actually even twice i went for two runs yesterday but all super easy i don't think i could ever be an influencer already we just talked about this before we started records some of the runs i was doing over the weekend i was doing some bits above so active route and my goodness me it takes a long time when you're trying to run and take photographs of you running or maybe using product you're not really running if you're taking (laughs) if you're filming your run and going hi run with me come with me for an easy 5k watch me put my sports bar on (laughs) i salute them you know all these influencers out there I sleep because I, I with, with when I flirted with YouTube previously, I know the hustle. I know how long 30 minute run could end up being if you're trying to film it and, and make kind of entertaining content. Oh my goodness me. So yeah, yeah. Big kudos to anyone who's making that hustle work. But yeah, back to running. Super easy. Rex is loving it. I don't know about your dogs. Well, you, you don't run with them on the lead, but Rex can't pace himself. So we are like, his legs are moving faster than his body for that first mile because he's just so much energy. And he chills out. He chills out after a bit. But yeah, it's been lovely just just moving again just getting some fresh air running i'm definitely you can hear me i'm full of cold again a bit achy 100 still not recovered but yeah the feet the shins all that is good so it's, yeah it's just I'm nice to get about you know. the shin, gary i felt that i felt yeah. that, that didn't sound good but it's okay no yeah it's fine uh, yeah it's broken, it's zero, broken, but it's fine just fine broken <laughs> zero but i would you know because again i'm i'm really enjoying this moment probably for the next couple of months where there's no races in the planet there's no rush to get out running but it's nice yeah i definitely wouldn't have rushed it back if i had any kind of pain whatsoever so doing like marathon pace sessions and long runs after the dragon's back no 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 i did you know entered my head because i feel really good about doing york marathon and i closed that down pretty quick so i just thought no 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 not going not to do but i made the... year, is it like this is this is hay in the barn time now for next year yeah yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, no rush, but it's nice, you know. It, it's it's quite good for my own uh, well being and how I'm feeling about my own running because a few years ago, yeah, I'd have been all over entering something really quick and trying to tick another box and assist. Yeah, it's a nice season of my running uh, that I'm enjoying at the moment. I made the paper. Let me just uh, <clears throat> what we got here. <laughs> what we got here? What's your paper called? East, East Durham. Yeah. East Durham. This is the life. I'm free. Pick me up. And take me away. We're at toughest challenge yet for Thanks, mountain Eric. runner. <laughs> oh, you're not talking about <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, front page and page three. Oi, oi. So oi, that, oi. Uh, what's, <laughs> oh, what's the headline on East Durham? The East Durham. Oh, hundreds turn out for coast to coast scooter trip. 
or pardons mm. needed for strikers. Oh. MPs call for minors bill to be extended. Jeez. Very local. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, super chill. I'm super chill for that. See that? Well, things like that, you know, I can say to my dad, I've done this, I've done that. It doesn't really connect with them. But if I show them I'm in the paper, it's like, oh, job oh, done well there. Good job. Done well. <laughs> and at a weekend in Harlow, if everyone's seen my Strava and it's a bit exotic, not the local trails. Yeah, I was on the uh, River Stort and canal boats, really, really lovely. And I, I was trying to think, I don't think there's any canal boats in the Northeast. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. We're helping my mother-in-law move house on the Sunday's run. After when I tried to run, I started to run after kind of climbing up and down stairs with with chest of drawers and wardrobes. I was absolutely exhausted, absolutely smashed. I didn't realise us runners were not really fit or useful for anything else apart. So from- weak, trying to lump a washing machine up the up the driveway, and I'm like, like time out, time out, and everyone's like, come on, Gary, <laughs> my little skinny arms. Well, it was a real treat. I saw <laughs> Steve Cram in the Premier Inn in Harlow, and we had a little chat over the coffee, over the coffee machine in the morning. That was a real treat. In his running kit, so he's doing a little morning jog. He's dripping in Mike, uh, dripping in Mike, dripping in Nike. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, he must have, must have still still have a relationship with the Nike, uh, his old Nike sponsors. Yeah, we had a takeaway. This is the big deal. It's the highlight so, of your week. We had a. <laughs> we were so feral. The reason why I'm sharing is we were so feral. We were so exhausted when we came back to the Premier Inn. We got a bit semi-naked and ate the takeaway on the bed, like oh. proper. proper <laughs> <dead pie>. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was great. We watched blank, what, what, blankety you blank. Keep Graham, doing your own time, you just keep that. <laughs> We were in a right mess on the sheets. It was uh, pretty oh, dirty. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and what else? Oh, yeah, a real treat to look forward to. You know, a Patreon partner, Fawnside Farm Cottages. I booked up a little stay in November, a little winter break to Fawnside Farm Cottages. So really looking forward to that. If we go to an event, say a race, I'm always the one that'll go, okay, look, there, it's £10 to sleep on the village hall. I'll always do the cheap or the rough and ready option. But for us to stay somewhere nice... I think it's going to be a real luxury. My daughter's even looking forward to it. Normally, again, say the Premier Inn, although Esme wasn't, wasn't with us, they did like these folding up beds. So she's got a teenage girl's got to share with a mum and dad and a brother, which is not great. Esme's got her own bedroom this time. No, no takeaways, naked. <laughs> no, no semi naked like takeaways. That. I don't even care what the weather's like. It could be absolutely tucking it down. No races planned, no Bob Graham support. Just going to go with the flow. We'll take all the board games. You know, I don't mind. We can do that as a family. But that, yeah, that's pretty much He can go, but he is not a good traveller. So my sister lives local. She loves having Rex. So maybe he'll have a weekend round Auntie Dawn's. That is my week. And because I've been down south today, I'm going to try. It's always you that does the accents, but I'm going to try and do a, I don't want to offend all our southern. As the our kids southern... say when we get on the airplane, <laughs> brace, brace, brace. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. What, Edwina? <laughs> what have you, you been up to? <laughs> You're like, I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> I don't know what I enjoyed more, the accent or the joy in your face as you... <laughs> good. You could be some sort of bacon, I think. Closed I was... your eyes, you'd be on EastEnders. What did we see? We saw a clip of Easter. Oh, I know, we were watching Strictly. We saw a clip of EastEnders and the kids were like, what is this? We want to watch this. And I was like, no, 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 no. Anyway, yeah, back at it, Gary. I um, I had a few nice messages. Thank you, everyone, for the podcast. One from my dad saying, think it's time to retire now, dear. That uh, oh. then to you <laughs> what you did. Maybe dad <laughs> don't listen to the end of this podcast then and we'll just agree with that. Lots of messages saying, I hope your recovery is going away. I I didn't feel the need. I didn't feel tired, really. Um, I thought last week, I'm just going to see, see how I feel. Go out, no sessions, just loads of running. So that's what I did. I did end up doing two sessions, maybe one session. I must write this down, Gary. So I I just started some nice, easy miles. Oh, Monday, the weather. But anyway, the weather was pretty rubbish. And then Tuesday, I thought, I'm not going to do, normally Tuesday, I do my hill reps. But I was like, I'm just going to run loosely up a hill and just not walk, which is a hill rep in itself and see yeah. how that and they felt really good so then Wednesday I thought well that wasn't really a session I have a really busy Wednesday with um, kids so I can fit in a little bit of running here and there so I had 45 minutes so I jumped on the treadmill and I thought I'm gonna do some like marathon pace 
efforts and see how they feel because I would, we'll talk about it at the end of the podcast, but my next race is going to involve a lot more running than lovely hiking with my lucky pulse. So I was like, just see like how this feels, what the heart rate does. Oh, my sweet Lord, Gary, I did 15 minutes, 12 minutes, 10 minutes, eight minutes at marathon pace. Well, if marathon pace in my face was so red when I got off that I like literally looked in the mirror and gave myself a shock. My heart rate wasn't that high, but it was definitely higher than what I would do a marathon. And <laughs> but it sounds like my I'm basing my marathon pace off my yeah, 2019. 2003. <laughs> 2003 whatever it was. Yeah. I was like, blah. I was like, geez, this is hard work. It was hard work, but it was fun. But hey. oh, I don't really, I didn't really know what to do with that. So I was like, I could be really disappointed that I'm really unfit running, or I could just part that and just go, oh well, had a good workout. So I decided to just go with the, oh well, had a good workout and enjoyed it. We'll just have to do do what you can do. I'm old yep. now, like a seven minute mile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm get, maybe. Uh, and then I had a lovely long run with mates, react, reactivated the WhatsApp group of running and said, who wants to come? Who wants to come on our Swiss loop on Thursday? Uh, this is a mega loop. Oh, I saw that. I think I even gave you kudos for that one, Eddie. You shared a picture. I love a, a Strava post with a picture. You love a picture. It's, this used to be my like mega hilly route, but after the summer I've had... This was like 2,000 meters. It's only 2,000 meters. It's easy. We didn't do it quite from my door because that um, I was going to take Tarka, my older dog, and that means the last like six miles are all downhill, fast running, and she would have just like, she refuses and be like half a mile behind us. So we we started a little bit up the hill, but then in the end, I didn't take her because I got the fear a bit that four hours in the mountain was a bit too much for her. So off we went, Love, lovely, lovely, lots of chatting, decided to stay clear of any, because this is, yeah, only just a week after the Vom Fest. So just ate a load of apricot sandwiches, drank water, little tiny bit of diluted tailwind. Is Nothing it literally just bread and apricots? I've never had an apricot sandwich. You've got jam. Jam, jam, Gary. Oh, jam. Okay, yeah. I think literally just sliced it because. <laughs> that would be well. Maybe that would be quite nice. Yeah. Anyway, um, but it was lovely, and we did it in reverse. So we did the big climb at the start, which is a, a long climb. You get like one thousand three hundred meters, I think, and then you drop down, and there's a bit of ski piece running. And I always look at the ski piece, going, "Oh my god, they're so steep when they don't have um, snow on them." We went to the Steepest ski piece, that's where we took that picture, in uh, the Port de Soleil, which is 40%, I think. And you literally, we looked into the top and one of the mums was like, oh my God, my kids skied down this, lost their ski and did the whole thing on one ski. Our kids just ski down that like for fun. I turned the other way and ski down the... (laughs) <laughs> down the blue. So we had we did a lot of running over the piece going, oh my God, I can't believe it. we ski down this. They seem awful because they're like blasted. They've like ruined the landscape, these piece, because they're like man-made tracks, basically, with all these rocks, not good. Um, but then we went on to some lovely runnable trails, lovely tracks. So we did it the opposite way to what we normally do, which meant that there was more running at the end. One of our group had never run over 20K. And this... Wow. So this is... I'm not sure how many K it is. Maybe like it's nearer 30K, but it's also 2,000 meters. So <laughs> kudos to her at the end. She said, I can't talk. You just keep talking and I and, and I will just listen. So we had a lot of, but it's lovely because our my group of trail mates, everyone like jo- has joined the, we've been running together for what, like seven years. So many people like join the group who have gone, oh yeah, I can do like, I've done like a 10K and then, they re- they f- then we're like, oh, that's, yeah, come with us. And then the first run, they're like, oh, my God. And then the next yeah. one, like, oh, yes, yeah, so for 100K. And then it just becomes normal. And they're like, Eddie, what's the next race you're doing? And they're this, and they're like, oh, yeah, well, I'm thinking of doing Swiss Peaks. And it's like, I love, I love it. it. People go in going, no, I just normally do like 5Ks. And then within a year, they're like, so I'm doing yeah. this like 150K. And no. I love it when you change normal. A lot of our group, you know, they've licked on 50 runners, but they're put the name in the baller for the hundred. And then you go and you think, God, oh, do you remember? Do you remember when you joined us and you like couldn't do and so hopefully the lady that joined us, though I did 
<laughs> I did hear like four days later, she was still struggling to bend the leg. <laughs> so, um, and then I ended the week. So it was a good week, 75 miles, about 14,000 feet climbing, 13, 14 hours of running. And we ended with our annual football lotto, which is like a massive bingo. It's so popular, Gary. It's in this big hall in town. There were 800 people in there and they were turning people away. It's bingo, oh Gary. This is bingo, but people love it. What's the prizes, though? That's why people rock oh, up. Is it big my prizes? God. So they have, they have 14 uh, lots, um, and then they have prizes, like four or five prizes of each of those tables. Whatever. I, can, I don't know how you describe it in English. And, um, it, yeah, the prizes are amazing, like skis, electric scooters. There was a holiday to Marrakesh. There's, like, helicopter oh, wow. rides. Because it's all given by, like, locals. So there's, like, helicopter rides, there's ski passes, ski chalet holidays. So I guess that's why people... Love it. Although some of them, yeah. then, then you can get like uh, five entries to the swimming pool and you might be a bit like, oh, I could have won a pair of the uh, the electric scooter or something. So there's a big prize when you get the whole caton, it's called in French. I wonder what it's called when you get the whole bingo table. Anyway, Bryn and I do the same job every year. I'm sure we've talked about this before. And we have a trolley, a Carrefour trolley. Don't know where they get them from. We just arrive. Get given the trolley. We have sandwiches and cans in there and we wheel the trolley around I joke you not for six hours. I did what thirteen thousand steps, wheeling wow. around Coke, Coke <laughs> iced tea, pizza, sandwiches. When people, the older generation, get more and more on the old beer and the wine, and so then they get the munchies. This year we oh, had no. cookies. We had to, we were so popular. I feel our story was the most popular because uh, we added, you know, like a flavour of comedy as well. Especially when I had to do the maths. I, I, have, I have a fanny pack on with the money. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to do the maths quickly and in French and the oh. stress and people are queuing because they want to get back because they don't want to miss the bingo. And I'm like, oh my God, what did you give me? And, and look, you give me a 50 and I have to give you, and it was only two pounds. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, Bryn was like, you are, a couple of the times he was just peeing himself because I was flapping because I'd lose the math. So we, High stress job, that Eddie, high stress. High stress, <laughs> but we pushed it hard, Gary, from the start so that we sold out within the, uh, before the end. So then we could relax. And I like the tactic. On, the, on, the, on his phone. Uh, but, Oh my God, it's exhausting. Well, especially when you've had a big running week and I was walking around with this trolley, I had to keep... one point, I had a little sit down, a little token so you're allowed a drink because you volunteered. Had a little perrier, Gary, sat down. The woman in charge came around and she said, you need to keep moving with the trolley. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> wow. Anyway, job done. We have to do these things for kids clubs. And um, we left just before the end because it was the kids were seriously tired and um, we had to get back for the dogs and everything. And the kids, even the kids went, thanks, mum and dad, for doing that. That was a lot. I was like, oh, my God, it must we must have looked really grumpy by the end. <laughs> I bet they raised a ton of money. I, I can't even, we, I mean, I can't even imagine, but those sort of things, uh, yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of 50 euro notes going through my fanny pack then. Woof. And I were like, who has a 50 euro note? The old <laughs> ladies who come up, they're on their old, uh, <laughs> this under the mattress. Just draw another one out. Bring it out yearly for the last. <laughs> anyway, good week. Perhaps, yeah, perhaps a little tired by the end of the week, but a good week. And I'm going to tell you what I'm training for, but I'm not going to tell you yet. Oh, no, no, dear listener. Also, because I know my dad only listens to the introduction because he wants to know what I'm doing. <laughs> so he's not going to know either. Yeah, you've got to hang around. This week's Brew with the Coaches question is from Patreon, Jim Cotton. This week's Brew with the Coaches question comes from Jim Cotton. Now, Jim is training for his first Ultra 50K in December and has had a couple of tendinopathies recently where he's just worked up to a nice 70, 80K per week before having to cut right back down to manage the problem with his physio. He's been running on and off for the past 10 years or so and has a decent base of miles and pretty strong fitness. When my physio and I are confident I'm healthy, how fast do you suggest rebuilding my mileage? Do you still stick to the 5 to 10% increase in these circumstances? 
Um, hi, Jim. Uh, thanks for your question. Essentially, um, as you know, with tendinopathies, um, there's a mismatch between what your muscles and tendons are capable of doing and the sort of load you're putting through them. So the key bit really in your question for me is when you and your physio are confident you are healthy. So I think the biggest determinant in how fast you can then return or how you plan that return is making sure you have got all the symptoms under control and you've done everything you can in terms of your strength training and all building that capacity back again. So there's lots of markers and sort of protocols in terms of establishing fitness to return to running and um, that your physio will, I'm sure, want to go back with you, uh, go through with you before you go back to running or whether or not you've managed to continue to do some running during your rehab itself. So it depends what baseline you're starting from, but from my perspective, making sure you are fit enough to run in the first place is the, the biggest thing because then it doesn't really matter how slowly you increase it. If you're not already fit enough to run, then it will come unstuck at some point in the future. So making sure you're strong and your base is where it needs to be in terms of calf capacity, lower limb strength generally, balance, all those other things that they'll have been working on. But there's certain return to run markers that you definitely want to tick off. Beyond that, again, the most important thing going forward is that you pay attention to continuing that strength work throughout. And probably, realistically, if you've had a couple of tendinopathies in different parts of your body, you're going to be needing to do um, as much, if not more, strength training than the next person um, because it is something, it's a long-term condition with a propensity to flare back up again. So making sure when you're making that return to run, you continue to do that strength work, which has got you back to fitness in the first place. So it's a little bit like the price you have to pay to continue to run is just incorporating that specific work into your training. And then beyond that, 5-10% increase always sounds sort of okay, doesn't it, um, in terms of how you increase your mileage. But the key thing is what base are you starting from? Have you literally had... 12 weeks where you've done absolutely nothing. And that includes walking, for example. So if you've not even been, really been walking long miles, it sort of stands to reason that you probably won't be able to then run or ramp it up as fast as you would like. So that principle of five to 10% is probably okay, but it depends on where you're starting from. And it depends on where your symptoms are, how your symptoms flare. And I think it's important to, to think it not as a linear progression that it'll be five, 10% every week. It might be weeks where you think, oh, actually it's a bit sore again. I've got to scale that back down again. So it might be progression and regression for these first few weeks and months, and that's okay. Um, but it's making sure you pay attention to that and don't sort of smash through that. Um, so yeah, keep on with the strength work, keep on, make sure you've done a good plyometric program. So they've done lots of single leg jumping, hopping, landing, all those sorts of things. And then yeah, sensible increase in mileage, but paying attention to those symptoms when they inevitably will probably recur at some point. Well, I'm just not sure if, if Jim's doing a trail ultra or maybe like a track ultra. I wonder if it was a trail ultra, would you go more on time on feet as opposed to mileage? Would you flip that? Always, like always for everything, time on feet, especially with something like this, rather than going, I'm going to run a set distance. I think one of the most important things is if you do have um, any sort of tendonitis or anything is that often physios and doctors want you to continue moving because tendons need um, tension to know to keep working. Uh, but then people think that that means that it should be always linear, like Rebecca said, and getting better. But tendons get like... <laughs> like an angry wife they get angry and then they feel better and then they get angry again and it's not a is no way like like a sort of like if you have a stress fracture you rest it it heals you rebuild the training and if all goes well you don't take that many steps back but anything with tendons they take a long time to heal like a really long time to heal that you need to be really patient and the only way they're going to heal is by you really listening to your body and instead of being absolutely obsessed with sticking to a plan and sticking to numbers is to just see how it feels that day. Does it feel good? What does it feel good? Have I pushed it too far? And sometimes you'll push it too far. You back off again. It's really about listening to your body. And that's for us runners, that's really hard. But if you want to be running um, into the future, then listening to your body. So I wouldn't even get hung up on five to 10%. I would really listen to how that tendon feels that day. Sometimes it's going to be fine. And it depends what you do, like sitting and things like that. If it's a hamstring, dry 
driving can really affect it. So it's thinking about the whole, your whole life rather than just focusing on the numbers in training. But it's very common. And Jim, we've probably all been there with a bit. I have a butt high hamstring that always in the winter likes to tell me that it's still there. But you like, I listen to it back off, do my single legs do my single leg squats and it that seems to shut it up for a few more months anything else to add trish no you basically said everything that i was going to say just re- reiterate i'd always look at i wouldn't get massively caught up in the five ten percent i'd look at it as a guideline and i think what's always more important is to focus on how you feel that day and not get sucked into you know mileage that you think you should be running um the other big thing i'd say is keep things low level when you're coming back from injury just keep no it sessions keep no it sessions nice and nice nice and chilled and you know you might need a bit more time to give yourself in terms of your base block so you know you're be- i think you're always better off giving yourself a little bit more time to get um, a good consistent base block in before you start pushing on to um other aspects of your training so yeah totally totally re-emphasize just what eddie said you also, Jim, you say, we pick your question apart a bit. You're training for a 50K and you're running 70 to 80K a week and it's your first ultra. So I think taking things back to basics would be really good. I think that's a very high mileage for your first ultra. Um, I don't know what your background is, but I, obviously your body has gone. I'm not ready to handle that load. Um, and so taking it right back, perhaps incorporating cross training as well, because if you get no pain on the bike, um, you can do your sessions on the bike and maintain a bit of fitness as as well so uh live and learn i think as well we all do every building block every training session get <sighs> russell i keep wanting to call you guy you look like guy ritchie in my head today. yeah <laughs> nah. you just need a flat cap and then uh yeah. and guy a couple ritchie. of dogs madonna um, was it get... madonna and guy ritchie yes well, that's that was a strange that was a strange <laughs> partnership guy ritchie do you have um do you well, have a, you suffered or, from a dodgy dodgy butt hamstring? Is he you guy from... proper Cockney? Is he guy Richie? Well, Mockney, well, 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 Cockney, Cockney, isn't it? Cockney, right? Posh Cockney. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yeah, you guys well, as always nailed it. I think with the uh, injury uh, period, it's moving over to duration rather than distance, and that's certainly what I do and what I get my athletes on. I actually try not to change the duration if at all possible. I've had chronic Achilles tendonitis my whole life or tendinopathy is that is the correct term? I can't remember. Bex would put me straight. Yeah. But if I'm normally, it's tendinopathy. If I'm 10 hours a week training when I'm running, I try and keep that 10 hours a week in somehow. And my Achilles normally will let me get away with walking in the hills. I normally can do that and keep the pain within like one to two and not piss it off, not make the wife too angry. <laughs> but um, you might want to put like weighted vest on or a rucksack and then you can get quite, um, I call it free bowing with it. Oh, I feel really good today. I'll just put a bit of running in. Oh, I need to back off. I need to walk. And so it's actually the ratio that is the only thing that changes. You're still out getting duration. So you're staying fit, you're staying strong. And the mental benefits are massive for me, but it's just the ratio that changes when I'm having a flare up mm. of an Achilles mm-hmm. problem. There's a lot more walking involved and absolutely, like you said, no sessions. I find the five to 10% rule really problematic. I only ever incorporate that in full training when you're hundred percent healthy. Otherwise you, you might be running 20 miles a week. And then the next week, what you're only allowed to run 22 miles and you feel fine, but that's just going to take too long. So I try to think about it in terms of ratio and duration. Um, so try and keep the duration as long as it usually was, if at all possible. It normally is possible. And I think people underestimate how much time we spend on our phones and on screens. And if you actually add it up, just throwing in a little lecture here for you. We can normally get out and spend an hour a day walking and it's incredibly beneficial for all the tendons and it's a bit boring so put on a tea and trails podcast or something you know to keep it just put me on just put russell on <laughs> yeah. on a bit of guy ritchie Lecturing. yeah yeah a bit of guy ritchie mate jim let us know how it goes we love we love hearing when people have listened and let us know if you get to that 50k yeah best of luck december wow good luck jim
right. We had Gary's side of the story. Now you want the truth. You want the deets. What really went on in that tent? Who did pee in the tent, outside the tent? We've got it all for you. We haven't just got the champion of Dragons Back 2023. We've also got Brew with the Coach's star, Trish. And they're going to tell us very different journeys they had, but both amazing. So here's our chat with Gary, Trish and Robin. Welcome, Tent 7, to the Tea and Trails podcast. We are super excited to have Robin Casty and Trish Patterson to the podcast. Gary's got the smile on. He's like, my bevies are here. How are you doing, guys? We are now recording like a week, a week and a couple of days post Dragon's Back. How are you both feeling? Oh, mate, well, well, I was I was doing okay until I looked at Robin Strava and realized that she's basically in full-time training again. <laughs> <laughs> And I did um I did a park run with my kid yesterday and my feet really hurt still. <laughs> it's only like 2K. Hey, you guys, you're already beating yum yum guy up yeah. there. Yeah. I'm I'm basically in the I'm still eating a huge amount of food. Like I, I actually lost like three kilos on Dragon's Back because I didn't eat for two days. <laughs> uh, and then um yeah, so I'm eating a huge amount of food and just waiting for my fat pads on my feet to reinflate after being compressed. <laughs> but other than that, I'm good. I saw a picture actually, Trish. Um your leftover food and there was a lot i think i had about two bars and a couple of yogurt covered raisins you had a lot of food left over i I didn't eat for like two days did i i just lived off tailwind for two days trish fueled the entire journey through wales on one gel (laughs) one gel (laughs) (laughs) sniffed it (laughs) what about you robin is are the rumors true are you back back running yeah i have uh i have been back for a couple of very small runs. I'd like to say I'm a, I'm a sensible physio, kind of. The body was actually feeling okay towards the end of the first week back. So I just went out for a very, very small trot um, just to get out and get some fresh air. But I'm definitely noticing, like, I, I think I slept solidly for about three days after the, the event. And uh, similar to Trish, like, I feel, I was saying um, saying earlier that actually I still feel like my Garmin eat alarm is going off every 30 minutes <laughs> because... I'm still eating pretty much every 30 minutes and that hasn't stopped yeah. yet. Yeah, starting to feel a little bit more normal now, but definitely had a lot of sleep and had a brain fog for for quite a while and it's probably still here. Real deal, that post-race brain fog, isn't it? Especially when you have to go back to work and you're like, I have no idea what's going on. You feel almost like you're drunk in the club and you're like, I don't really know what's going yeah. on. <laughs> what about your emotional state though? It's probably the past two days I've clawed myself out of a pit. Like, I think for me, the toughest part was the Dragon's Back race because I didn't physically, I didn't really, um, I wasn't really stretched, I would say. Like day five and day six turned into a bit of a death march for me with my feet. I found day three was super tough like super, super tough. Like they had to go into a really, really deep, deep cave <laughs> to get through day three. Um, so it was more men- more mental for me. Like it, it really did suck, suck a bit away of my soul. <laughs> so I think, I think it's going to take a, you know, I've been quite chilled out about it, but I think it's going to take a little while for me to kind of just get that fire back, I think, because um, like it did take a lot out of me just that, that those few days where it was pretty rough. It's very different from using your physical capabilities on a course like that to having to really dig deep. It's like two different races of yeah, like, yeah, it is. Yeah. So actually, this big, this my big physical capability. I wouldn't be able to use this mental capability unless I had that physical capability. But I don't actually need that. I have to go cut my soul out, my heart out, drag, and that. Oh, the trauma of that is no, it's real. Like it will be like you know. You've I'll been definitely, there. Um, I'll definitely have day three PTSD for a while. I think. Like even now, thinking about day three. I'm oh like, yeah, get that. You get it for the flashbacks, and you're like. <gasps> day, day three was when your shoe fell to pieces. Was that the? No, that that day three was when. Remember when I we started off in the morning? I was like, Gary, I really feel. Oh goodness me! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then it just got worse from there. And then yeah, day three and day four, nausea. Not as bad day four, but day three was horrific. Day three was just I spent the entire day wanting to lie down and on the and just curl up in a ball and you oh, know. Goodness. I was emotional for you on day three and day four. I felt like I was living your emotions um <laughs> as you were going through them. <laughs> 
And it's after oh. you ran up. We were, it was over, it was over, like, over Kadir, and you caught up to me on Kadir, and you were like, Oh, God. I, yeah. I was like, Oh. I feel really sick, mate. And you're like, you're like okay. I was like, I'm not dying inside. <laughs> I was like, keep going. Wow, yeah. It's so hard that, isn't it? Because if you want, you want to stop with your mate, but also you're like, clock's ticking. Sorry, I love you, but no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so good seeing each other and I well, seeing all the runners actually um on course especially. like that especially you <laughs> Gary not so much, not so much not so. <laughs> how are you Robin how's the week because you at obviously epic high having won have you had a crunch? yeah you've had to go straight into some full-on work too haven't you yeah I think um the last day well the emotions build up throughout the week as you're getting more kind of physically exhausted and you're kind of investing so much more emotionally and physically into the race as the race goes on the last day felt like an emotional roller coaster I had some absolutely amazing highs especially crossing the crossing the finish line actually I had some on day six as well so um yeah that was um just felt all over the place like exhausted emotionally um and i definitely felt that going into the kind of next couple of days after the race the response from everyone in terms of like friends and family and kind of all the comments that i've got have just been absolutely incredible and have just made the race even richer um but yeah, post-race blues are definitely kicking in 100%. I have spent a lot of time on different race uh, websites in the last few days. Thanks. <laughs> always good. Enter, enter, do not enter. Uh, going into the race, guys, what was your sort of goals? Was it, were you thinking I can champion, I can be up there at the front? Were you thinking I'm just going to finish? Having volunteered the year before, um, like I had a quite... Well, we both had quite good insight of kind of the the challenge and the adventure that the race is. And for me, my personal goal was experiencing that adventure and setting myself that challenge of getting to Cardiff. Um, it's a massive thing to get over in your head in terms of like the distances each day, the elevation each day. And it's it's really, really scary kind of that first that few weeks, especially those few weeks going into the race of just getting your head around actually how like you can't even contemplate how your body's even going to cope with that. It's there's so many unknowns. Um, so for me, it was the challenge of getting myself to Cardiff and performing the best that I could perform each day and giving giving everything to each day. Obviously, there was a little bit more of attention on podium finishes and where I would come, especially with kind of the ARC and UTS this year. And actually, Trish was amazing with this and the group were amazing with this. Trish knows that I don't deal very well with that attention. <laughs> So um, things like when a um, like an article was written and my name was mentioned in it, Trish sent that to me kind of a week or so before the event, just being like, just like just so you're aware, you're probably going to read this anyway. Like this is out there. Deal with it now. Get over it. Move on. Get excited about the race, and then you can kind of go back into y- your own why rather than kind of other people's whys. Trish, what about you? I absolutely knew Robin was going to smash it. Like I, I, I knew she was going to, um, you know, she'd be. You guys had wreckied quite a bit of the course together, am I right? Yeah, yeah we've yeah. done a lot of training together. Like you know, and I, I absolutely knew without a doubt that she was going to be one of the top contenders for that spot. I mean, I, I, it's it's difficult to know because you don't know how people are going to respond on a day by day basis. But I definitely thought she was going to win it for sure. Um, it was just for me, it was just a question of how close that would be for other people um in terms of my own expectations of the race like for me going in i i thought based on who was there i could potentially maybe third place if you know if some if depending on what stuff happens if i had a bit of luck on my side as it turns out i had a zero luck on my side <laughs> Uh, crashed and burned massively but yeah I mean so I was I was keen you know I thought I could do all right on it certainly a top five slot I don't think places can ever be your no. own yeah, yeah. Aim. and actually it was such a great journey and for me like I always think you know it, it's it's places versus people and actually the people that I was with there were just fantastic and it was, so, it was such good banter and the key thing for me was doing the best performance that I could do for my capability you know and I could did I I did I achieve that physically I no I, I think I could have done better in terms of placing and times but 
but I did what I could given what I could on the day and I, I, I couldn't well, have that, any harder um you know based on the stuff that happened and so you know it, it wasn't the satisfaction for me in terms of the race it wasn't the, it wasn't satisfying in terms of that I'd achieved in terms of my physical capability but I'd pushed as hard physically and emotionally and you know, mentally that I could given what had happened and what what I had to contend with on the day but then again that's the same for everyone everyone has to do that and it has to be about it has to be more about places it has to be about the journey and getting through and you know making it to Cardiff and I think that's got to be your primary your primary motivator I didn't expect the I had my own personal reasons and challenge but I didn't expect to make so many connections out there on the course. And uh, I think that whole format of the reset every day and then with the 30-minute stops, it really give you, or well, someone like myself in my place within the whole race, yeah, it did give me a, a lot more time than what I normally would have to appreciate other, other competitors. I love that. I really enjoyed that uh, side of it. Trish, you were a bit worried about Crib Gok at the uh, onset of the race about going over it. The last time I think we did a brew with the coaches and you were like, I've got vertigo. Uh, Gary said it was a piece of, and he just skipped yeah, over it. He just, he just skipped over it. <laughs> I was watching your little dot across it, just saying my prayers to BB Jesus. And <laughs> four, five points of contact. Uh, what was, yeah, what, was that bit all right? And did you, uh, and then Robin, did you have similar bits that you were dreading a bit? I mean, crib, crib got for me was, uh, it was, a, obviously it was a beautiful day. So you can see the full effect, which was not, not ideal for me, but um you know, I tend to not overthink these things. I tend to just get on with them at the time. And I, I got to the top and I was like, yeah, I'm in. I'm going to do this. I'm just going to shit. I'm going to get across. And <laughs> so I'm all psyched. And all of a sudden I hear this, oh, Trish. And it's Larry. And I'm like, oh, what are you doing up here randomly? <laughs> Obviously she was there. <laughs> but I didn't expect her to be there at that time. And it was a really nice moment to see her. Because that's the first time I'd seen her in the race as well. To see her and then kind of go off to um, do Crib Grok. But the, the funny thing was... Was. I actually uh, I was going across and there was this there was this tourist there and he's he's basically in the bit where um I mean Rob will know this bit there's a bit where you, like the very very thin bit basically where you you have to kind of like really go across and he's like stood there like frozen and he turns around and he's like he's like I can't beckon move I'm, I'm shitting <laughs> <laughs> and I obviously I'm just like I'm like I cannot stop for you now mate I'm in a flow you have to keep moving <laughs> I'm like no keep moving forward and he's like I can't look down I was like don't look down oh yeah don't look down <laughs> but he eventually he eventually like kind of gets in the position I had to kind of skiddle around him but I was lucky there's a couple of the camera guys up there as well who kind of then moved with this other guy and the guy behind me who I kind of left and actually caught back up because I was moving so slow on Cape Grip Gog. <laughs> and he kind of skadoodled round and shot off. And I was like, right, come on. So I just jumped on the back of him um, and focused on him and got got through. So it wasn't that bad. But it yeah, I was I'm not 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 my not my area of expertise for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you crushed it. You beat the yeah. chorus. How about you, Robin? In terms of Cribcock, I love Cribcock. <laughs> I think it's so much fun. I love going up there. I love going up there in the recce. I love going up there in the race. The same with like Trifan and um, some other little bits that are on the course. Like that's like a playground, isn't it? just maybe a bit more risk but there, it, there is that like playground like you're back to being a kid you're like crawling around um so i i really enjoy that i don't think you get that much opportunity to do that in terms of like what i was nervous about um day two for some reason in my head um it became my nemesis again trish will know because i spent the whole year talking about day two and dragged her over day two uh, probably about three times <laughs> because i just wasn't happy with it it's super tough terrain um it's relentless there's a few lines that you can take which which you can get an advantage um in terms of your timings of the day but only if you get them right um and i'm notorious for i'm not very good at following a trod um so <laughs> well i saw you was it uh, just as we came off calisidra you oh my goodness we made a meal of that robin oh, oh, that, oh that, was, that was my fault as well so coming up <laughs> uh, this is day three this is an example of how i'm not very good at like never follow me on a trod um so day three you can come off Cairder Idris and there's this really nice line where you can pick where you'd kind of um you you just end up um not 
like reducing the elevation a bit and it's a bit quicker you just um, miss out a hilltop and um i saw it on the map we hadn't actually practiced it but i was like you know what i think i've got this um and then as we we're coming down kind of took took what i thought was the line and then various people followed me including gary and um i think john <laughs> shields followed me as well yeah. and Vic victoria said that she saw me cr um, going off so followed the line as well and it was awful like it I think was... we all choked we all choked and panicked and went too early basically yeah, yeah. it was awful <laughs> and i just felt really guilty i was like sorry guys um never mind let's just get back to the path but yeah so day day two was a big um it was a big head game for me um but actually it turns out that actually on race day i loved day two, well i loved to an extent day two it was actually day three where i found a lot more challenging and i wasn't expecting it to be as challenging so day three was a real kind of mentally i had to push it a lot more on day three and day two, actually, surprisingly, was a little bit easier. Did the wind give everybody a bit of a break on day two? Really, really. Yeah. Cool. When you yeah. got any elevation, it cooled it down big time. Yeah. Day three was just so hot. There was no wind and there was just no let up. And it was so easy to overheat. You were just got, like, it wasn't just um, managing your running. It was more about management of your your temperature throughout the day yeah. and there were so many times where i could just feel myself just like overheating and then just really having to rein it in you both seemed like you knew the course quite well was there a bit you were particularly looking forward to and then did that actually marry up with being your best bit too there, do you know what there's elements of every day where there is just some like there's inc the views throughout the whole course are just unreal and we we were all very, very blessed because we managed to see all of those views um, where a lot of our reckeys, uh, we didn't see any of the views, um, <laughs> where it was yeah. pretty much, yeah, pretty much all done in clag. I remember there was, well, there was one recce where we went past an, uh, a huge dam and oh, both yeah. of us didn't even notice when we did our recce that there was a dam there. Um, and you literally go right past the reservoir. So um, seeing the views every day was like just made it it was just absolutely phenomenal i think each day came with its highs and came with its lows um day one is just a lot of fun um and you're fresh as well it's the only time you actually feel fresh when you're running <laughs> um and then day well day six like you can't you can't beat the emotions of day six and um seeing family on route especially i saw a lot more of them on day six and saw some friends on day six as well and then yeah. just that coming into cardiff like that feeling was just unreal it was really good oh, wow. you've got a long time for that build as well because you hit cardiff and it's quite a lot of running through lovely parks the amount of time you have for the emotion to build is uh well it's, it's something else what about you trish so i i really like day two um i really enjoy day two i think it suits like that suits me more um that kind of like rough ground and that um so yeah that was that was probably my best day um the other day that i really enjoyed but didn't get to kind of run my race I was day five because you know you've got a good run in and um and that's that's great but there's you know that when you start to go over the you know, over you know petty fan and the like really get into kind of into the beacons like that plays better for me as well and but I could I just couldn't I couldn't descend like my climbing was in fact I was for you was no and I was climbing yeah, yeah. climbing fine but the moment I got onto um you know any descent I was well I mean you got I, I had to like but I was on sliding down. Go on the I, bum. <laughs> I just I've heard there's video of this. There's, there is video. I it. do need to share it. Yeah, we got video of uh Brew with the Coaches special. Uh, oh but... yeah. <laughs> and my feet were just so gone by then. It was so excruciatingly painful that it became it, it was really frustrating because like you know everyone was then running off and I was like, oh I can't do that. <laughs> guys, guys, guys <laughs> yes, wait for me, wait for me guys, wait for me. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> I was interested, Robin, you said like after day one, you loved it. I came into camp day one thinking, oh my goodness, what the hell is the rest of the week going to be? Like? <laughs> I was Day one, I was pretty, day one and day five, particularly I remember the standout days of thinking, shit, that was, that was really, really hard. More than I expected. That was super tough. The terrain on day one and well, and, and day five is, I don't know, I feel like it's so individual to Wales. Like you can't, quite yeah. replicate that in 
the peaks or the lakes. Um, maybe in Scotland, I haven't explored Scotland as much, but um, it just feels so individual. And if you haven't kind of been on that specific route and that terrain, it, like, it could be a little bit a little bit of a shock to the system. Did you, either of you actually, uh, Trish first, did you visit the shops on route? I, apart from uh. before the claim uh, where you stole all the caffeinated drinks, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, did, I didn't buy anything. So uh, Robin and I and uh, Zoe Murphy, we chatted quite a lot about this. And Zoe was like, oh, you're definitely going to get in the shops, mate. Any opportunity you can get in the shops. And I was like, nah, mate, I ain't going in those shops. <laughs> I haven't got time for that. <laughs> I literally, top of Snowden, day one, cracked. I was like, <laughs> I was like flipping it, mate. I need to get a Coke Rapida. <laughs> kind of pop, so, top yeah. of Snowden, I ran into, uh, yeah, I ran in, saw Nicola McNally in the front of the queue, jumped in front of her, got my, and the guy was like, guy was like, we've only got, uh, like, they didn't have any flat Coke. And I was like, I need a flat Coke. I, I mean, I need a fat Coke, not skinny Coke. I don't want a skinny <laughs> Coke. And uh, he get, gets me one from the fridge. I'd have given, I'd have paid him anything for yeah, that. Yeah, he'd have gone twenty <laughs> quid. He'd have gone. Yeah, this. here's my card. Take three thousand quid, whatever you need. Just give me that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, from from that day on, I was like, any opportunity I had to run. So to the co-op, to the bakery, I got some. You know, I I, I took the opportunity because I mean, I think it just it mostly for me on this. You know, once I realised I was in such a bad way on day three. It was one of the only ways I could get calories in as well, like as in like liquid. Yeah, I was smashing everything. And obviously day five, we got to that lady at the bottom of the story arms and I, she was like, what you have? And I was like, everything. Everything. Screw <laughs> <laughs> this guy behind me here. <laughs> I'm having it I was just about to grab for things and then Trish bought it and me. Like, no, leave that for me. <laughs> I felt sorry. I don't know if I told you about this, Eddie. I, you might have saw this too, Robin. When there's the famous co-op stop and they'd sold out of full fat coke, I think all the hatchlings had bought it. Yeah. So people were buying <laughs> Coke Zero by mistake. <laughs> Robert didn't stop. I know Robert didn't stop because the media would wait at every shop going. They'd make because there was nothing much happening in the mornings of racing. So they make it into like a really big deal. So we're gonna see if she's gonna stop. And I was like, we all know she's not gonna stop. There was no way I was stopping at a shop. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Such a professional, mate. Such a pro. professional. Gary and Trish bringing up yeah. the. Uh... I, was just, I was just, I was just all the talk, basically. Cracked day one. Day one, cracked. <laughs> all talk. What about the Dragon Mail? I thought that was a lovely touch. Is that just new to this year, or is that something that's always happened with the Dragons back race? It always happens, yeah. Yeah, it's, it always happens. You got loads, Gary. Yeah, Such I did really well because oh, I kept begging for it on the podcast. You know what <laughs> <laughs> I kept putting out a plea, please send me track and mail. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. Robin, you had some hilarious ones. I was reading oh, your. Oh, yeah. I, I need this lemon friend of yours in my life. Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think it just turned into because I, well, I didn't actually tell that many people that I was um, running Dragon's Back in terms of like fam, like extended family and friends and things like that. But um, my my mum actually sabotaged that and ended up t sending messages with the links to like a load of my friends. And this so everyone knew. <laughs> yeah. um, and it, I, I think it just turned into a competition of like who could send the most ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous messages. I had my sister telling a story of uh, the battle of me and the dragon um, throughout the week. Um, and there were rounds every day, which was really good. I had some poems of some really good friends and I then, your brother yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, my friend uh, Tom Lemon, who lives out in Thailand with his wife, he's just very good at dad jokes. So, of course, they they came every day. I've taken snippets of them because I just wanted to like share them out a little bit more. So, I suck them on Instagram and things like that. They got they've got to be appreciated. How's the how's the nav? I found it pretty good. If pop a few wrong twists and turns, I think I followed Trish astray a few times. Uh, what about yourself, Robin? Did you keep on track? Yeah, I think so. So, um, apart from. So day two, where there's there's a few lines that you can take. Um, there was one particular line that just, I don't know, um, I spent a lot of time thinking about. Um, and I managed to get that get that right on the day, which was which was really good. And that was a bit of a confidence boost. 
day three, you know, Gary, you followed me on the very <laughs> slightly off route. Um, and then um, in terms of the rest of the nav, I mean, it helps massively having recce the route. Yeah. Um, and we'd recce all of it bar day six. Having just that knowledge of kind of roughly kind of what hills are coming up next, where where you can kind of, where are good places to eat, where like having that idea you can picture where the support point is and where the water point is. That helps massively. What hills you um, need to do? So Some of them you don't because of the advisory route. Sometimes you do. I went to so many summits and cursed it that there wasn't a, a control point there. If I had the luxury of recce in the course, then yeah, yeah, definitely it could have shaved a little yeah. bit of time off at least. And I made little, um, for every day I made little route cards. Um, so just literally with um, the checkpoint, the rough distance of where that checkpoint was and a description of what it was. So it just helped me when I was running along, like panicking, thinking I missed a summit or something like that. I could just quickly check oh, it and just see if, um, if, I was, if I was there or not. Uh, I, generally all right. Uh, the one thing I, I did do on day three where, uh, yes, yeah, so that, that, that that turn where everyone got lost, I went down there as well. Not got lost, but went. I went too far, and I just, to be honest, I I, I knew I should have turned off, but because I was in such a state, I was so focused on just trying to stumble forward as much as possible. I I massively overshot the line, and and I knew I knew straight away, and I was, but yeah, it was really frustrating. And generally, like my nav's all right, so I was very I was a bit cross with myself. But I was I was mostly sick, so I was like, that soon passed. <laughs> <laughs> Trish, by the way, is like a homing pigeon. If like you ever think that like you're off route or anything like that, just follow Trish. She like she's normally like mm. she knows what? exactly what? the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that day, mate. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like you did really well. Uh, and how about getting back into camp every night? How was Tent 7? Was it uh, a ship shape? I imagine, Trish, you're quite like military in your, in your precision. Uh, socks on the right, pants on the left. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, Robin will tell you, I had a massive thing. Robin's really bad at shutting the tent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. She's like, coming out. Every, every like every ten seconds, I'd be like, I'd be like, make shut the tent. She's like, I'm coming out. I'm like, but you're not out yet. Shut the tent. Is it because of midges? Yeah, there's midges. Yeah. Midges, midges, midges yeah. everywhere. We we generally had we had a really good tent, I think, and because we were coming in at different times, you know, that really that really helped. Obviously, Robin was always the first one in. Yeah, you um, have the whole the whole centre to yourself, Robin, so you were able to la da da. He was actually a very good egg, and uh, put put my bed up as well. Oh, so what a star! Yeah, I know what a superstar. She obviously hadn't exerted enough herself enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Trisha was super bossy. I remember night one. You and I thought it was you, Robin. Actually, I was thinking, oh god, Robin's a bit, uh, a bit bossy. But it was actually Trish telling people to be quiet. (laughs) She didn't hold back. (laughs) And I think, but you know, by that time, everyone knows you need to shut it down (laughs) because everyone's getting up early, uh, unless of course you're a hatchling and you're not. In which case, you know, this person was like chatting chat. But it's like this: can we all just whisper? Can we all just whisper? <laughs> but Gary thought um, it was Robin um, in proper like diva mode, and I should have just left it. I was like yes, diva, <laughs> winning races, diva mode. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I was sorry, Robin. I thought it was you. <laughs> you should have seen Gary. He told me that too, Robin. He was like, "We can't get her on the podcast." She was in that Oof. tent, <laughs> <laughs> way too focused. <laughs> I mean, our tent was pretty good. I mean, I think day two, day two, everyone was up in the night, like oh, up yeah. and down, like a yo-yo. It's just this constant, like, wee-wee stream outside of our tent, so I imagine, like, big pool in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Trisha, I always went to the toilet. I didn't want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, Trisha, I same. Did. I always went to the toilet. Oh, I think it was yeah, only I, you. I was just <laughs> <Trisha's> <laughs> <doing> <laughs> 
<laughs> you actually went to the toilet. I mean, that's extra light. It's got to be what, like at least 30 meters. Even dear five when the toilets were miles away. Um, yeah, yeah, I always went to the proper loo. Definitely did not. Not one time did I go to the proper loo. But Eddie shamed me after I said I was going to take my wee wee bottle in the tent. But, uh... Oh, I didn't shame you about outside the tent. I shamed you about getting um, Miss <laughs> Mini Dragon out in front of the girls. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, it, day two we were up a lot in the night, and then from then on, it all kind of went. Nighttime just turned into this big, like, hallucinogenic, like, crazed time. Where I mean, day three, I was so off my, like, literally out of this world, kind of delirious because I'd like eaten nothing, like, drunk, you know, been like smashing tailwind. And I, mean, I woke up in the middle of the night. And for some reason, I thought Robin was looking at her. I didn't, I thought Robin was looking at her map and I kind of rolled over to her and I was like, Robin, mate, what are you doing? <laughs> She's like, uh, trying to sleep. And I'm like, I was sleeping you know, at the time. You woke me up. <laughs> My nephew, I'm like, why are you looking at the map? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Not a, not a map to be seen. Because you were like, what are you doing? And I was like, Sleeping? Sleeping. <laughs> Why are you so angry? <laughs> I hate those nights. And you wake up and you're like, what's the time? What's the time? You find and like, oh, thank God, it's only three o'clock. Thank God I'm in this torture chamber for like two more hours. Yes. You're just so, the sleep is so restless. Um, let's talk a little bit about kit. Kit that worked, kit that didn't uh. work. <laughs> um, let's start with Robin. <laughs> The good news before Brain the bad news. You, you did look like Robin on the Insta. On the, you looked like you wore the same clothes every day. Was that? Uh, um... No. <laughs> 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 um, so no, I uh, didn't wear the same clothes every day. Um, I had um, a few few pairs of shorts and a few t shirts, um, but only two of my t shirts were like lighter color. The rest were like gray and black and things like that. And there's no way I was going to wear gray and black during the the heat of the day. Nothing wrong with gray and black. That was my uniform. Oh, oh was that your choice? <laughs> <laughs> it's overheating even more. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, so, um, I had two t-shirts on rotation, so wash one, wear one. Well, a lot of my packing, I kind of planned my packing list based on the weather of the reckeys. Um, so, um, at one point I was about to take four waterproofs for the week, um, and <laughs> something like three long leggings, like three, um, three different long sleeve. Um, I quickly switched that up like the day before. Um, and I'm glad that I did in terms of my kit. Yeah. I, everything, everything kind of held together. I didn't have any kit dramas. What was your trainer of choice? My trainer of choice. I wear Rocklight Innovates. Um, they seem to fit my feet well. So I had those and then the like ultra version of the rock lights because I didn't want to change like the style of shoe too much when you're going for like the road sections back onto the trail sections because there's obviously there's some days so day particularly day four and day six there's a lot more road sections so um, having a, a shoe that's slightly more cushioned and that second option is is useful but what I didn't want was two completely different shoes so I like once your feet get used to something you don't want to change if, if it works don't like don't fix it um just having the innovate and then the innovate like uh, the rock light and then the rock light slightly padded just meant that i wasn't changing up too many things How about you trish you got some dramas actually with your footwear choice at least yeah i so i i, I was wearing the sportiva jackals and i i bought them done like one recce in them just to so that they you know would be fresh and ready for the for the dragons and they just fell apart on the day on day four like the I mean, in fact I was running with you wasn't I go yeah. we were like a, we were a couple miles in it was like this flip flop flip flop and I was like you know you know when you've got mud stuck to the bottom and I was like god this mud just won't come off it's the stickiest mud going and I looked down it's just my soles just completely come off yeah so that was that was emotional um luckily I had a pair of like old Scott's ultra track in my drop bag at the, I think it was like the 20 mile point that day, the support point was. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of bash out at the rest, like to the support point like in, in those shoes, which it just completely destroyed my feet. 
completely destroyed my feet. Um, and when I got to the checkpoint, I was lucky that one of the one of the medics, uh, Kellyanne, she was really great. She she basically taped up what she could but by that time you know by because day three I'd had such a rough day three and when you're stumbling about all over the place you're not looking at where you're putting your feet you're just stumbling forward so my take my feet had taken a big battering on you know they were sore and tender on day three and day four as soon as that happened, it just ripped them to pieces, just absolutely ripped, ripped my, my right foot to pieces. But other than, other than the shoe incident, all of my kit was good. It was fine. There were no, there were no incidents and I was happy with what I'd taken with what I got. Oh, I felt for you, Trish. When your shoe was flapping around, I just thought, my goodness me, that's such a rotten look. Uh, and then on top of that, your shoe. You also, did you, Gary? Did you just leave her? Drop me, drop I me. I think Instagram. I did just say, see you later, Trish. See <laughs> you later, out of here. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed though, Trish, because, I, well, I didn't enjoy the fact that you were struggling, but we did share some miles. Day one, I never saw you. But then after that, yeah, we did, um, yeah, we shared quite a few miles, I think, over the whole week. I enjoyed I enjoyed that. It was good. You pulled me up that hill. No, it was awesome. It really, I think people don't really appreciate how much of a help even if you're not physically side by side just having somebody in sight that you know yeah it, it, it really is yeah. a, it really is a boost yeah and being able to jump on the back of someone mentally and kind of let them do the work of it that's that's hugely yeah. helpful i mean that's what got me through day three basically <laughs> and i love the hatchling too you know andrea one of our tech mates she did drop down to the hatchling oh, yeah. but then day three four five and six i'd see andrea quite a lot and it was always a bit of a boost i mean andrea what a what a i mean you know talk about hardcore andrea um literally peeing blood day day one day two um i go past her she's still peeing blood she's vomiting she only just misses the cutoff for the water point because of a nav error because her watch died uh she then basically does the rest of the course yeah like so she basically missed half a day. She did the entirety of the course with a section of half a day with um like, you know, even after she was peeing blood. I mean, so hardcore. She's and, my hero. And strong every day. She, you know, she was there. Every time I went to do a checkpoint, a support point, she was either there or just coming in. So yeah, super, super strong. Drop me day five. Drop me. <laughs> everyone drop me day five. I think everyone did. Yeah, I was gonna say. Can I just ask? I just asked Robin about before your question about the race at the front um, because uh, how was it under because that is so many hours to be under pressure that though your lead slowly increased as the week went through it would only take you to fall apart slightly yeah, that yeah. you could you can hemorrhage you know it was it was um though it looks like oh she's got like two hours as you know you have a really bad day and suddenly did was that hard for you robin like holding that the attention on you as the as the female leader and also crushing a lot of m most of the men's field i've got kind of mixed emotions about that i do like it's um it is an additional pressure to hold because it's something to think about because it's not just getting through the day, it's getting through the day and performing your best. So there's like these two elements to it as well. And and like you said, an hour or an hour and a half like means nothing really. There were some really lovely comments of like, oh, you're way ahead, you can relax now, like you've got a good hour's lead and an hour doesn't mean anything. You can, like you said, you can have a bad day and then that and then that's gone. You've lost that lead. So there was an additional pressure with it and also a little bit more kind of media attention that, that does that does sit around that. And that's something that I'm getting getting used to. It's also like that there's a positive side of it. Like it's like competition is fun and it's meant to be fun. Kind of sitting in with those those group of amazing female runners. Like there were some incredible female runners in that top 10 group. This year was one of those years where we saw a lot more females within the top 10 overall, which is a really, really positive thing. And it was amazing to share some of the journey with those, with those females. For example, day three, me and Victoria, um, she pushed me so much on the first half of the day um she is so strong especially like well she's strong throughout but the descent coming down care idris she like she was a rocket and i was just literally trying to keep on her heels um 
and then um for the second half of the day we end like because of the kind of the heat took precedent we ended up just go running the second half of the day together and to share that second half of the day um was an incredible experience and i got to i got to run a little bit with sana um on day four and again she's an incredible descender to like learn those skills from other people is amazing um and shared a little bit um of time with Alyssa as well on the end of day two we had some good chat come kind of coming into the finish line and we kind of got each other through that last slog to the finish line on day two there's definite like there's there's a lot of positives that come with kind of sharing those that experience competition together because you kind of you all understand that you're completing it but you're trying to perform your best as well the bits I always just felt for you was when the media followed you as you started out of the start each morning and I think I think she'd just give her a few minutes to like eat into this she and they would be like so how are you feeling and you'd be like you're so good you're like yeah yeah okay well, I could see you just want well, just give me a moment you don't know what my hamstrings are doing right now <laughs> I think it helped massively that um so Zoe was covering covering the Instagram and Zoe's a good friend and she's again in her own right she's an incredible runner she's ran the dragons back before she knows she knows the route and she's she's feeling your emotions with you so um she would um she would do the the videos and like you, you have to and it, it like the videos are a good thing because it means that everyone like people watching can experience the race as well so like I do see the positive side of those videos but she would equally once she turned the camera off she'd have a quick we'd have a little quick chat and she like she understood what I was going through just having that like little I don't know two minute chat and that gave you that little boost i never thought of that, actually the actual camera person knowing what you're going through yeah it's super super important you were too busy gary going this is my best side <laughs> how long have i got <laughs> actually there was one point um gary oh, i think it gary going through what day was it it was day six um i saw the clip of um it was going through murph at tidville okay and um and Zoe like did a quick chat with me and I had literally nothing interesting to say. Okay. I was just like nodding away, <laughs> like not coming out with anything like yeah. of no. And then I saw the interview of you on day, um, day six through Martha and you were coming out with these great statements about your emotions and your feelings oh, wow. and what to watch going this. through. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you're so, you're so much good at just like vocalizing what's going on. Oh, I don't know. I thought I, thought I was struggling. Right. But I, have to, I have to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> now we go with Trish first, actually. Now that you, you know, you obviously both volunteered and you experienced as a racer, was it what you expected? It was, it was what I expected. Cause I, I mean, I've, I've volunteered for two years at Dragon's Back, so I, I know the race. Uh, and it, it definitely was what I expected in terms of like the layout, how, what happens. Uh, I didn't expect to have the race I had, but you know, you can't write your own, your own race. You have to take things as they come and, and part, part of it all is adapting and, and working with what you can do. So yeah, the race itself was what I expected. I thought it was interesting um, cause obviously they had much more, they had a lot more hatchlings this year. That's definitely changing the, I would say, uh, the race in some, in, you know, in certain areas, but it, it's still, it's a great race. It's a phenomenal race. I was really happy just to, you know, get into Cardiff. What a great end result in Cardiff. It was fantastic. Do you think you'd go back again to try and have the race that you'd hoped you'd have? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You heard it here, yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I um, certainly not next year because I'll be away, but maybe the year after that, I, I would like to do it again, just because I didn't, I don't, you don't, when you've not run to your physical capacity, you don't get the same emotional, you don't get the same feeling of, you know, like you just haven't, you haven't done what you set out to do. And for me, I didn't, I hadn't run to my physical capacity, so so that left a bit of an empty feeling. You know, you replace that because it was just so awful. Awesome to see Robin run such an incredible race. I mean, she really ran such an incredible race. You know, we talk about that like pressure. You know, she she 
like she, Robin's super humble as well, but you know, I could see she fit, she felt elements of that pressure going into the race. And, and I thought how she dealt with it on a daily basis, the race she ran, it was just fantastic. And, you know, just to, just to be there to be able to witness that as she came hurtling past every day and, you know, left me in, in the dust. It was fantastic. And see stuff like that, you know, you're, it, it's really inspiring stuff. Everyone from the front runner to the last person that comes in, it's, it's super inspiring for people to, you know, you know, to keep going, to crack on and get it done. Yeah. It's a great race. Oh, it's awesome. I loved it. I, for a few times um, when people would go past me, I'd try and match their pace thinking, they're not going that fast, yeah. but no, <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, do, couldn't do for long. How about you, Robin? Yeah, was it what you expected? Uh, yeah, hundred um, percent. And and even more. Um, and I think like the big thing about Dragon's Back, it, it felt like you weren't just investing in the race, you were ex- investing in like, the without sounding cliche like the whole journey to the race as well and and then the event um and just having kind of done the volunteering seen it from the other side and then having a year of amazing recce weekends and training and um really kind of embracing every element of the race and there's so many layers to it it's not just the running it's how you handle your admin it's how um how you prep your kit it's how you handle your headspace um your feet and your the temperature like there's so many different elements of it that it's not just it's not just a running race the race itself is just beyond incredible like the route is insane one of the things that makes it really different is because you are there for a week and you do get to, and you have because it's staged you get to you get to know all the runners and you get to know all the volunteers in the evenings and there's a real sense of kind of community that builds up with that and there there are a lot of volunteers that go back every year and because they've they've invested the, um into that into that community yeah and by like by the end of the week it just feels like a big happy family there's just so many more elements than just running that comes with comes with that event and i just think it's it's just really really special yeah it's hard to describe it properly really to give it to do it justice but yeah it is pretty awesome okay i've got a couple of quick questions i'm really mindful of the time what next trish ah uh, so i'm i'm gonna go to australia for a little just a oh, well little while i'm gonna do a race over there uta um australia's uh utmb version i'm gonna do that and probably their equivalent of the their their worst 100 miler some more some more good suffering so <laughs> nothing nothing until then though i'm gonna have a little bit of a break to relight my fire yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you robin bit of downtime i think it's like i've done some big races this year and it's really easy to overbook the calendar so i'm just gonna have a bit of chill although saying that i have eyed up some fell races Yay. <laughs> at the end of the year, but they're short then next year i haven't decided yet just gonna kind of sit down and have a look and i've got a list that is way too long that is physically possible so i just need to kind of work my way through that and prioritize a little bit we do have a, pa- a patreon question so i'll go through this hi dragons having an awesome experience slaying the dragon has it made you think about taking on longer stage races uh, like the PLT or the TDG? PTL. PTL. PTL, sorry. And that's from Jason. Apologies, Jason. I didn't copy they're actually, your second name. They're not stage races. They're they're all one races, PTL or TDG. Okay. But I think what he's trying to get to is that you're gonna are you tempted to do other mega long stuff? 100%. So much fun. I'm all about the longer stuff. I mean, the longer the better. Definitely love it. Love it. <laughs> any, any any opportunity to elongate the suffering is, you know, time well spent. I think. <laughs> it just pu- purely, okay. you know, if you can be like uh, mindful, you're you're away for a week doing exactly what you want. That's such a treat. I love that. I love that. Aspect yeah, that. yeah. Don't sell that to my family. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this. No. <laughs> Eddie, do you want to do the quick five? Should I? Yeah, I haven't been able to get a word in edgeways, Gary. You asked all my questions. Sorry. <laughs> Step back. <laughs> okay, let's make these quick. Robin's got to go and what are you doing? Fixing legs on people or? Oh, I'm on a work course at the moment. So it starts again at 1.30. But oh, um, one minute. I'll, 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 I'll apologise as I walk in. Blame Gary. Right. Piece of kit you took and you never used. Trish. Poncho. Waterproof poncho. Robin? Any warm kit. <laughs> yeah. Anything else Insulated jacket. Favourite, favourite camp meal, Robin? Oh, a jam roly-poly. Had two, maybe three helmets on that. This is, this is how you win races, guys. Trish? 
Uh, lasagna and chips. That was the first meal I eaten for like two days. So, how much sleep do you reckon you got on average each night, Trish? Ooh, quite a, a lot, I would say, on the first. But as the week went on, it basically it kind of started high and then degraded to almost nothing on day day five night, where I basically was up all night going ah, and Andrea kept waking up night, she's like, take some more paracetamol. <laughs> But not much. <laughs> Robin? Yeah, not um, the first night you get a few, a few more hours, but from day two onwards, it's very broken and you'll get a few hours most nights. That's when the pain starts kicking in, night time. Have you named your dragon? Yeah, I've named mine Ned. Ned? Oh, and it's a boy. Interesting. Is there a reason? So me and my sister had this chat for a while. Um, one of my favourite ranges is the Carnedi, so Ned. Frish? And I haven't named mine. That's what's left. The dragon. The the dragon. Like, <laughs> yeah, we don't have a name yet. And leave it six months and then. I'm so cool. So cool. Yeah. Don't even know it. <laughs> so trendy. Uh, we've already asked this again, but uh, I don't know if Robin asked this. Would no. you? Okay, you, you get a free entry for 2020, 2025. Would you do it again? Ah, uh, she like, might be I'd listening. Like to... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I think it's the pain is too fresh at the moment to uh, um, to know if I'd want to kind of put my body through that again. I would, I would hundred percent be there volunteering. I, I've already said to Shane that, like, please, please have me back as a volunteer. And then I think I need a few more weeks to just like emotionally recover before I make a decision whether I want to push put myself through again. A post race laundry of those two t shirts and a pair of cycling shorts. <laughs> it took me so long. <laughs> Trish, yeah, you're there. You're there. Yeah. Sign I'll, her def- up. I'll definitely do it again. Definitely do it again. Oh my gosh, if you are, we will just make sure those shops are uh, full of fat coat. Coca Cola. Yeah. <laughs> we got special discount rate for you, Trish. After <laughs> last time, massive well done to all three of you. Ten seven. Massive well done. Loved tracking you all and all different adventures, but um, all came out with like some memory memories, hashtag memories you'll never forget. Um, and thank you so much for sharing them with us. Instagram story, Eddie. Oh my God. One job. Yeah, that's Goodness me. Oh my one job. Um, <laughs> So we always share, this is what Gary always says, we always share our, our social media pictures with an Instagram story. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like your Instagram story to be? Robin's turned off. She's like, oh. um, no, 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 I'm still here. Um, I was trying to work out if I'm going to do a serious one or a silly one. Um, silly, what, one. Uh, silly one. Uh, what, I'm still standing by Elton John. Yeah. That's a good in there. Yeah. Oh, well done. Gone in hot with no. that one, Robin. That is good. I'm going to say, um, oh, what's that one? What's that coming over the hill? <laughs> a monster. <laughs> it's Trish and a fluffy trainer. <laughs> fluffy trainer. <laughs> That's what my boyfriends used to sing to me when I was doing triathlon training. <laughs> the same thing. What's that coming over wow. the hill? Is it a monster? Trigger there, Trish. What have you done? <laughs> Oh, yeah. awesome I love it oh we love you guys I hope this isn't our last podcast together it's just another start of a beautiful relationship uh, enjoy the rest and we yep no doubt we'll be chatting to you guys again very soon yeah well done enjoy thank that. you Thanks. very much bye bye bye, <laughs> bye. I love that. When you get lots of different people, they're all doing the same thing, but they remember the events slightly differently. So it's wonderful to have a catch up with Trish and Robert. And yeah, pleased to hear that my little dragon did not make an appearance in tent number seven. Tales from the Trails. First thing we do is discuss our Strava chart. At the top of the charts again, the 240 miles is Lee Wingate. And Lee also tops the amount of time on feet with 79 hours, 22 minutes and 20 seconds. So Lee has finished his... I didn't mention it, actually. I didn't realize it was an unsupported joggle challenge. Wow. I don't know the full date, if you can go into shops or at least you have to carry everything. But I saw he had some kind of buggy that was pushing with him. So yeah, incredible effort. But to do it unsupported, that... 
blows my mind. And Lee's been raising money for the Royal Marine Charity. So yeah, an amazing cause. And I will share the Just Given link in the show notes. Yeah, still raising funds. And then Ben Shirley, Black Beacons 100 by run, walk, crawl, 105 miles actually, and 26,000 feet of elevation. That is a heavy flex, Ben. That is a heavy flex. And his Strava comment was, never been so broken by a race. And all in all, Ben did 27,940 feet of elevation that week. Yeah, well done, Ben. Well done. We thought we'd add a stop and scroll. I just made that up and I love it uh, for our Strava members so that you can, you might just get a random shout out on the podcast. We like the look of what you've done. Gary and Gary loves Strava. So he's gone in deep. He's found Emma Hayden. She recently ran the Waddington Fell Race. She runs for Bowland. Bowland? Bowland. Bowland, I would say. She runs for Bowland too. Uh, she ran about seven miles, 14,000 feet. No messing in that race. Whew. Now, this wasn't uh, a scroll and stop, but I noticed uh, Giacomo Squintani. Now, he's always near the top of the charts, but his company, I thought it was really interesting, his company are donating money for every kilometre an employee walks, he checked, and running is okay. Now, Giacomo, he's done about 3,500 miles this year so far in 2023. He loves to run. I think they might have uh, bitten off more than they could chew <laughs> when they said it's okay to run. Yeah, that's a lot of dosh. Yeah, he's going to help raise a load of cash for a worthy cause. Well done. To celebrate you, Cargo Projects, joining our Patreon perks, we thought a competition would be ace. Two hats of your choice, up for grabs, one for you and one for a friend. Try to keep it super simple, but bear with me. I've got four things to read. <laughs> right. Number one, both people must be part of the Tea and Trails Facebook group. Super important that both people are part of the group. Tag or mention a friend who you think would look awesome in a U. Goku Projects cap, share the post. You know, that's really important too. And also, if you are Patreon and you think, oh, goodness me, I'm not on Facebook, don't worry. All Patreons get an automatic entry. But yeah, if you could share it with your friends and community, that would be ace. We'll pick a winner at random on the 10th of October and then announce it on the following show. And don't forget, Patreons get a very generous 20% off at yougokuprojects.com. I think if they understand the competition and they actually do all that, they deserve the hat, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I did okay. <laughs> you did great. You did great. <sighs> I think, Eddie, we're both pretty chipper this week. No need for a boost, but Always we just indulge. <laughs> I'm going to go first because I really like this first review. Sue Wilson, Need Twinkly Dragon Stars. Episode 38 did not disappoint. Again, a tissue warning should be given. It was great to hear how Gary absolutely smashed his dragon's back adventure. And as per usual, it was so honest and true. Always good to hear the highs and the lows and tent life. Sure, there is a reality show there. Well, yeah, I wonder. I would Gary tell you... returns to the tent. <laughs> He's stinking and grumpy. Russell and Gary are spooning again. <laughs> Honestly, can't recommend this podcast enough. Gary, Saying well done simply does not justify the work, effort, and sheer determination that you demonstrated. But a huge well done, and this episode invited the Tea and Trails family to share your journey and be inspired to step out. Thank you, and now feet up and eat your body weight in yum yums. <laughs> it's been a good start of the week, actually, nutrition wise. But yeah, thanks, Sue, and thanks everybody. You know, so many people have reached out, Eddie, uh, and I've had a lot of 49, 50 year old men and women saying that I'm flying the flag. I don't want to say inspiring. I think, you know, we all kind of tread our journey, but showing that it's not over, you know, you can still push for things, even Let's though... Let's face it, if you can do it, anyone can do it. I think that's more <laughs> what we need to see. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Eddie. <laughs> we'll be back. Tell you what has got our back. Kate the Vet, Long Run Companion. I've been listening for a while now since a friend in my running group talked about the podcast recorded just after Eddie ran the spine. Of course she did. Episode seven is still the record breaking episode. This is the same running group mentioned by a previous reviewer led by the Hay Runner. So I too have signed up for the Amsterdam Marathon next month. My first road marathon, I think 
talked to another of your reviewers when running the Lakeland Trails 55k in July. As I spotted her Tea and Trails t-shirt, it was my first ultra too. Until listening this morning, I've heard much of interest and giggled a lot, but today was the first time I w- welled up while running. The Tales from the Trails about the runner with Parkinson's brought tears to my eyes. Keep up the good work. Thank you. No, thank you, Kate. Good job. Smashing through. Amsterdam Marathon, Lakeland Trails. Oh, what a marathon. Amsterdam. I think when I remember back in my road marathons, Amsterdam's got to be up there, top three. What a beautiful city and a great course. I just hope it's not too windy, Kate, because yeah, round down that river, I think it's the River Amstel, you could get battered. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Gary, we going to need something because you go every week going to go, I just done easy miles, right? More of the same, easy miles, <laughs> no structure. <laughs> gonna, can you add anything to this podcast or am I just carrying you all the time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can carry me. I love that. <laughs> you can carry me. Um, I should, yeah. Ooh. No, I'm not. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm not going to enter a race, not just yet. But what I do need to do, actually, because last year opportunities came up and I fully embraced those opportunities, but kind of messed with my race calendar. And I'd love to do, you know, all the trails. I'd love to rock up with Greener Miles, Punk Panther and Dales Runner, these people who support the podcast. And they're not a million miles away from me. So I would love to tow the line at least one of those races. And if I don't look and kind of put some heavy pencil on them at least, then I might end up double booking myself and missing out again. So yeah, a bit mindful of that. Bodyweight exercises. I've yeah, for some reason, there's a bit of friction between me and the gym at the moment. So I need to. Yeah, <laughs> so... yeah it's hard. It's hard to get back into it. It is, it is. And even the treadmill, you know, I mentioned the treadmill being, uh, I use the one down the gym, but it just involves a journey to the gym. So it's not currently, that's not happening. But again, it's, you know, it's okay. It's like, yeah, I've started moving. I've started running. No rush back. I think anyone who looks at my Strava there, there might be three or four mile runs. I'm not setting anything alight with those runs, but I think it's healthy. It's a good place to be. I'm home alone this weekend. Well, Lisa's away again. She's doing round two of moving house. Yeah, pray for Lisa. Super tough, super tough job. So me and George will probably reacquaint ourselves with all the TV that Lisa doesn't like watching. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Too much for George? It's not too much for George, but maybe the content's a bit serious. So it's probably going to be things like Walking Dead and stuff like that. Anyway, big race announcement. Whoa. Come on then. Drum roll. It's not it's not a big race, but it is a big race. As in, it's not a massive race. There's actually only 100 entrants because it's the first time this race has been run. But there are many, many miles to be covered. It was sort of on my radar all year, really. (laughs) Uh, I was thinking about it, but I wanted to see how Top Dret went and so whether I would want to do this. But as we know, we don't need to talk about Top Dret anymore, um, how that went. So it left me with a window of, a, a window open, a door still still ready to be a world still ready to be explored i felt that, an itch to scratch oh i don't want to say that <laughs> a nipple to tuck away there's still so many ways we could describe it. <laughs> i felt like i've had like i had a really good training block to south Downs way 100 disaster i had a really good training block to not dread disaster i've had two really good trading blocks i'm not injured and i don't feel like i cut the race out of my body that i can do i know everyone's like you did the spine but that was ages ago now so i am going to toe the line on december 13th on the first running of the centurion winter 200 you are crazy i might hear people say i 200 miles eddie what What? the hell (laughs) Hey, the Gary, I'm not doing it alone, am I? I'm not going to. Yeah, we're going to reunite again. (laughs) This is very different from the spine race. It's 200 miles. It's down south. The terrain is much more runnable. It's basically um, a big circle around Box Hill in the southeast of England, linking the North Townsway and the South Townsway. Goes past where actually almost goes past where I used to live. No, I know. That the sort of like long legs of the course really well, and then little bits of the linking bits as well. It's not going to be Mark. It will be a lot more. So I had a good chat with James before I decided to do the race about like 
whether my body should do whether I should do it, why I would want to do it, <laughs> to sell myself to him, basically. <laughs> do you want me on the start? Am I going to be more drama than uh, <laughs> athletic? Than <laughs> um, but we talked a lot about like the different way of approaching the training as well, because obviously with the spine, you've got the massive backpack, but he wants this to be a much more running race, hence why there's a lot less kit that you need to carry. It's just a sort of like a cold weather UTMB kit, what okay. you would wear to go up in the Lake District for a day. Um, then with the added, huge added bonus, you, so you get three life bases um, where we can stop and have a meal. There's beds if we want to sleep, change, whatever, Being in, be inside basically. But you can also have a super crew. <laughs> Gary, well, he did no not. Pressure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's going to yeah. be years. I'm going to look at I don't know. It's going to have to lock those car doors and not let me in, Gary. So it's going to be a completely different vibe. Obviously, the spine, you're totally out there on your own. You know, it's like some of the, it's like 40 miles between you and civilization. This, I won't ask you to come every three or four miles, but we will, uh, you know, every, let's say every three, four hours, I'm going to have the ability to, if something's not, if the fueling's not working, to be able to change the fueling. If a shoe is rubbing, like that's massive. And there's going to be a ton more running than wonderful hiking uh, as it is on the spine. So I'm- The back of the van's going to be like a sweet shop. It's going to be yes. (laughs) And what happens- Might be nothing left when you get there. (laughs) Sorry, all I really want is, do you remember I had those little chocolate bits with the biscuit and you go, what's that around the mat? Oops, (laughs) really <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was a big one that makes me super excited. I get to spend, well, you get to push me around. To the Mars. I'm, really, I'm quite tough, loved already. Good. How you feel about that? I don't okay. like any, I don't like any, you can't show me an ounce of weakness. There can't be any of this like lovely podcast, uh, sad music. <laughs> it literally is to me. What is it, Eddie? I don't want to get out, get out, get no, out, me. out, out, Just out. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was crewing I was crewing a friend once and he went to sit down and I I told him off. <laughs> yeah, I'm up I'm all up for that. But uh yeah, so I'm super I'm super excited. Hence why back into running, back into running. Um how I'm gonna approach my training for this with more running, but obviously very different from a hundred miles. You can't run it like a hundred miles because there's another hundred miles to add on in. Now I'm trying to strike the balance. Basically, my thoughts are you want the strongest legs. God has given me strong legs. I want them to be the strongest that they can possibly be. I want to be really fit. Do I need to be really fast? Can I be really fast? Really fast. (laughs) Can I be the fastest version of myself and the strongest version of myself? So I don't think I can without pushing the injury boundary, but I still want to do sessions because I like doing sessions and they give me confidence pushing, but too many sessions like perhaps I would do two a week if I was hundred mile training, but yeah. I'd want to up the volume a little bit. I need to be super, I need to become uh, running, like really comfortable with basically just running, 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 running on tired legs, just keep you moving mentally, just getting my head in the game that this is just, you just need to keep moving. And so I- now it stacks up. I'm just trying to think of say, if there was a, a hundred miler, you could kind of compare roughly course wise over this 200 miler just to see- what the shift is because 50 milers are so different to a hundred miler. Mm-hmm. What would be say a, an average pace that yeah, you maybe be aiming yeah. for over 200? Got 95 hours, I think is the cutoff to do this. Wow. So it's not, you know, people, there's not going to be like long sleep breaks, whether I sleep at all, we'll see how it goes. There's going to be a ton of running. So my aim for the next couple of months is to become a, a, a long, like a forest gun, like a long distance practice. <laughs> the I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna grow my beard. I'm just gonna let it all hang out. Gone back in the gym. Went back in the gym last week. Oh my god, Gary! I always do this, and I know because I set gym programs for people every week, and I'm like, not too heavy. Get the movement back, then add the weight, then add proper weight. So give yourself like to do. I do need to do that. I'll just go and I do, basically I was too lazy to move my weights off my squat rack that I'd left up there for before. So I just did the same. The next day, Garrett, the next day I didn't feel too bad. The day after, oh my God, like I was, I, the kids had set out this little um, course in the garden with cones and it started to rain. And I was like having to pick them up. I was, my, my whole body was like, oh my God, I feel like 90. I feel like the woman from Titanic. <laughs> it's 90. 
five years since I've done any weights. Anyway, so weights are going to feature for the next six weeks or so. And lots of core. Bryn was like, you need to do even more core because when you've got the hills to break up the running cycle, you then adjust your body weight position. Yeah. You move forward, you're moving back. You're changing the muscles that you're using, but this is just going to be constant, constant, constant. So if you have a little weakness, then it's just going to be a little more weakness, a little bit more weakness until you're like leaning and so oh, more God, the lean yeah well lean. fingers crossed if you want to see the lean yeah <laughs> uh, but i will take my poles as well because i think as any i found in the spine i was just using them to stay upright a lot in the latter stages as well when you get really tired um and just i'm just going to use that strength i got from all that hill work my legs are two pair very very strong at the moment and then just try and keep that strength but just get the legs used to just running continuously. So I'm going to do a lot of double days going out on that second run, not long second run, but when you're tired and you don't want to go running mentally, I think that's really good for like just yeah. mental strength in that basically all these, this, what that's what this, these races are. It's like just mental strength of like when you're 30 miles in and you're a bit tired <laughs> and you're like, Oh my God, it's just, you know, you just think back to all those times you've just gone out. I'm going to run at awkward times. I'm going to do all sorts of just mentally going to. All the rain, when it's raining, get out the door. It's sort of like, I remember this with the spine. It shows me how much I want it. If I'm like, yeah. oh God, everyone's at home sitting down. You've got to go and do it. Like, and it seems like pointless, like a 45 minute run. But you're like, but it's the like getting out and doing it is like just chiseling, chiseling into that, like that strength, that mental strength. So that's my sort of plan. I'm going to do hill reps, keep those in just because even though the course, well, the South Downs way is, and the North, they're both undulating. On a good day, you'd be able to run most of it. So I want to keep the hills. Also, it's what I've got on my doorstep. So there's no point me going, I'm not going to, I'm just going to run up and down the track outside my house because that is rubbish. Why would you do that? So I'm going to keep the hill, hill reps in and then maybe like every 10 days, I'll go on the treadmill and just fire out that. No, but it's good like say with Todd Dredd you were seeking out elevation because of that nature of that you can be a lot more relaxed because yeah, everywhere you run is going to have more happen because it's yeah. just where I live I don't need to worry so much about it if anything like last week I probably did a little bit too much elevation and it could have done a few more miles so work a few weeks on the next uh, I've spent the next few weeks kind of working out the balance working how much I can push it like how many hours I can run and still recover and still bend down to do shoelaces and unpack the dishwasher. And I obviously don't want it to like impact on family life. It has to, though it's, I have to try and, um, though my family is super supportive. I don't want to be exhausted all the time. So it's getting the right balance between training really hard, but then still being able to go, but then not being like grumpy and, you know, still being able to go, oh, okay, let me know how you do that. I'm it's still trying so to work hard, that isn't it? It's just so <laughs> hard. And I think parenting anyway, you get grumpy after, especially at half past eight at night where I'm like, done, no more questions. No, no, but, 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 yeah. but, 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 <laughs> and and I, how are you feeling though? I remember, say, Lakeland 100, I was pretty worried about the outcome because of the two previous attempts didn't go the way I wanted it. And now going into Lakeland 100, I feel pretty rejuvenated. And yeah, I was like, whatever it was, nine minutes off. I can I can do this if I get if I get fortunate. What's your mindset? Obviously, after your two to, recent races. I can't go into it thinking, if I don't do this, I'm a failure. Because I think that's what that would be. The the odds are get a 200 mile race, the you know, the finish rate will be very low. They're really yeah. hard. So I have to shut the door on the last two races. Both of those races were circumstances beyond my control in some ways. But I've learned so much from them that I kind of feel that was my, this is so cheesy. This is like one of those American podcasts. But I kind of feel like I learned so much from those two, what happened at those two races, how I badly perhaps dealt with some stuff, how I dealt with it well, how I've moved on. That that's that stands me in such good stead then for this race. The like mental strength, the 
the the sort of things I've learned that worked well, things that didn't work well. I kind of feel like go on, throw it at me, throw it at me now because I can deal with it and. I, I shut the door on those now. So if this goes wrong, that has nothing to do with the other two races as well. And I yeah. think you have to feel like that. You have to feel like, okay, the outcome will be what it will be, I'm, but I'm going to prepare myself like I did with the other two as well as I can. But there are definite things I can do, like I'm going to massively. So I've already, I'm going to fly over a few days before, give myself, do my food shop to be delivered to my mates that live five miles away. And and prep loads of different food options, loads of different uh, drink options, really go a lot of thought going into the fueling and the hydration and that plan. We're going to have a spreadsheet plan rather than just trying to wing it, wing it, which you can't do, obviously. So I don't feel that any prep, like I don't feel like I need to perform at this or my career is over because yeah. The jeopardy, the jeopardy of these races. It's too much. A little much. bit of jeopardy. But I do want to go into it, which perhaps we didn't do at the top, but having ticked off all the things that I can control, the controllables and being more prepared, really having looked at that course, gone through with you, like, you know, having a really solid plan, even if it then all just goes tits up, the time was spent and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. I don't feel like, Oh my God, if this, you know, and let's face it, the podcast content, if it will be. <laughs> They're the best episodes, <laughs> biggest downloads. <laughs> but you make a really good point, Ae. When, not that I want to turn it back to Dragon's Back Race again, but the DNF rate is so high. So, yeah, it doesn't mean it's a failure. The odds from the, as soon as you're on that start line, are stacked against yes. the majority to get to the finish. But I love that as well. I think that's what is yeah. addictive. People are like, the, or everybody, it's saying you can't do it. Everybody expects you not to do it. You think in your heart that feeling of absolute how? How am I going to do it? But that is the that's the reason we do it because how many people are lucky, are privileged enough to be able to go? I want to do that. I'm going to make the time to train. My family are going to support me. My mates are going to like put their hands up and go. I'm going to come and support you. So it kind of like, well, then let's just see. Let's just see what happens. And if it works out, amazing. If it doesn't, we'll have had a great time in the youth hostel, Gary. Awesome. I'm super excited. And I do think you'll do it, Eddie. 100% I think. I will give will my, I will leave, as we always do, a little part of my soul on that. I will do my utmost. And if I don't, I'll blame you entirely for poor crew. <laughs> <laughs> my fault. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> what are you going to be like? I'm going to be like buzzing with the GoPro in your face when you come to the checkpoints and asking you like 20 questions. Are you okay with that? Absolutely. I love, you know me, Gary. Just give me, just make sure, you know, what we'll do is we'll get those like, um, those social media, like uh, ring lights as well. Oh so yeah. Yeah. I can sort you out one of those. Uh, <laughs> old blusher. Just like this time, you know, we look back on that spine video you did just this time. If I do have like bits in my teeth and like my hair, just like, maybe just get just steady, just lift. Oh, that's fine. Eddie. Don't worry. About you can do what you want, Gary. I'll owe you a million things just for driving around and chucking some precision hydration out the window. I'll do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be great I'm looking forward to a little away day it's not very often I no visit day, the Gary. I think it might be a little longer <laughs> yeah a few days yeah <laughs> a few Can't days wait. in the south that you get to see the south downs I'm literally giving you a holiday of all the south national trails as well because you say oh, I always want to come down and see the races there'll be no need after this because you'll have driven around all the checkpoints I'll have had enough of it all <laughs> and I'll be able to improve my southern accent too it hardly needs improving it was so natural. Anyway, yeah, get shout out, shout out if you're also perhaps towing the line for Winter 200 or if you train for 200, any tips or tricks perhaps. And what's the, sorry to keep you this, uh, what then after that, what is the time scale for Northern Traverse? Four months. My plan then would be I would have to take a month off, no running. But the great thing is here, I won't be able to run anyway because it's snowed by then. So I will just ski January and February, put the shoes back on, March, give myself like six weeks of running before Northern yeah. Traverse. Uh, again, experiment on myself and see. I think if you don't smash the yum yums for six weeks, you'd be okay. I'm not partial to a yum yum, so I think that'd be okay. Hobnob, that's another episode. Wow, that is epic news. What a bombshell to oh. end the show. <laughs> I enjoyed the show. Hopefully you all enjoyed the show too. If you did, please take a look at Patreon. Loads of great deals over there. You save a few quid. 
we can put some money in the meter too. Thanks to all our partners and Patreons, new and old. Be kind to your future self. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and give us a share. Tell your mates, tell your running buddies. In fact, tell everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. You're amazing. Take a moment, take a breath, stop, drop your shoulders, pull in your glutes, and know we've got your back. I'm liking writing these end of show notes. I feel like I'm giving myself a little, come on, let's do this. It's a creative outlet too, Eddie. I know because I do love a bit of creative writing like that. And when I read it out loud, I'm like, wow. That's uh, trust the process, listen to your body and your favorite podcast and make sure you kick back, turn on Strictly and refuel with your favorite brew. My name is Eddie Sutton. And I'm Gary Thwaites. And that was episode 40 of Tea and Trails. <laughs>